For this project you're going to have to use a spirograph to create some shapes and once you've created those shapes you're going to determine the mathematics behind the shapes. If you have an actual spirograph, meaning the set of plastic rings and wheels and pens, you can draw the shapes that you'll need for this project using the shapes and the pens and the paper that come with the spirograph. If you don't have a spirograph, that's okay. There is a virtual spirograph that you can use online. So what I'm going to be showing you is some of the things that you're going to have to be able to identify regardless of which type of spirograph you're using. And then I'll also show you a little bit about how to use the virtual spirograph if that's what you're going to use to draw your shapes. So let's start by looking at the ring and the uh, inner wheel that you're going to be using to make your shapes. The ring is identified um, by two numbers. In this case, this fixed ring, meaning it's the ring that won't be moving, um, is of a size called 14496. The 144 is referring to the number of teeth or gears that are on the outside of the ring. And the 96 is referring to the number of teeth or gears that are on the inside of the ring. For our purposes, the 96 is the only important number because we're going to be drawing on the inside of the ring, not the outside. So you could ignore the 144. The wheel on the inside is a rotating ring, and it also has a size that's based on the number of teeth or gears that it contains. So this particular inside ring, the rotating ring, would have a size of 75. Now if we take a close-up look of a design that was drawn using a fixed ring and a rotating ring, there's some other important things you're going to have to notice. First of all, the design itself has some features that we're going to call the vertices. And the vertices are the points on the figure that are closest to the gears on the fixed ring. You'll have to be able to count the vertices on all of your figures. You're also going to have to be able to count the distance between vertices. So in order to do that, you need to find any two vertices and look for the teeth on the gears that's closest to those vertices. Now since we're counting distance, be a little careful here. When I look at these two vertices, you might be thinking there's two teeth between, and that's true, but we're looking for the distance between. So we would count one, two, three as the distance between the two vertices. So what we're going to do at this point is take a look at the virtual spirograph and you'll see that there's something else that you're going to have to count whether you're using the virtual spirograph or the real spirograph. Now I'll get to discussing the features of this virtual spirograph in just a second. But before we do that, let's talk about the one other thing that you're going to have to count as you are making your drawings. And that is how many times does this inner ring rotate in order to complete the drawing. So let me take this inner ring and position it in a way that I'll, I can count this easily. So I'm going to just take that, um, that red dot that you see, that's where the pen is at, and I'm going to put it as close to the fixed ring as I can. So I'll put it right there. And then what I'm going to do is start to rotate the inner ring, the rotating ring, and what I'm going to count is how many times it returns back to its original position. So let's rotate it. Now if you watch, it's touching right there where it was originally touching. So that's one rotation. And now it's touching again where it started. That's two rotations. 
it's touching again, that's three rotations, and there's four, and there's five. So after five rotations, the ring has completely drawn the pattern. Now if you need to, look at that part of this video again. You need to watch the number of times the inner ring comes back and touches where it began. So it took five rotations in order to draw this figure. Now for the rest of this video, what I want to show you is a little bit about how to use this virtual spirograph um, if, in case this is how you want to draw your figures. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can get your drawn figures uh, printed out. So if you look at um, the left side, what you'll see is two um, columns of gears. The one on the left says fixed, the one on the right says rotating. Um, for the fixed, you're going to be doing either the 144.96 or the 150.105. So you can click on those and switch between them. For the rotating, the largest of the rotating rings is an 84, and if I scroll up to the top here, the smallest of the rotating rings is 24. So you'll be using various sizes of rotating rings as well. Over on the right side, you can control the color that you're drawing with. So I was drawing with red that time. Um, if you're going to be printing this out on a black and white printer, you probably want to have a darker color, uh, such as uh, maybe the purple or the red. Um, perhaps the blue, but sometimes blue does not print very darkly on printers. And you can also click the uh, plus sign down here, and you can actually come up with an even darker color like a black, um, and make your design with that. Now, in order to rotate, you can either grab onto the inner ring with your uh, mouse and, and physically rotate the ring around. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to rotate. Um, and some of those keyboard shortcuts you'll find over here where it says keyboard shortcuts. Um, now, I'm using a PC but if you look up at the top, it also says Mac users can substitute uh, for the control that you see down here uh, in the, the PC uh, instructions. So, for example, if I want to move the gear, um, I can use the arrow keys. Um, I can also move the gear without drawing, which is what I did at the very beginning. Uh, so, the keyboard shortcuts you may find are useful in case you don't want to just physically drag that key around, well, it's virtually, I suppose, uh, but you can drag it around with your mouse. Um, I'm going to close this out for a second and show you a couple of other things here. Um, up at the top, you'll notice the second icon from the top says erase everything. Uh, that's something you can do if you want to just start all over again. And then at the very, very top, show or hide gears. So once you've drawn something, let me just pick something out here to draw. Um, so I'll draw this up real fast. Well, it may take a little while. This one is a little more involved. Once you've drawn it, um, if you do not want to see the gears, and you probably don't, uh, then what you can do is click up here where it says show or hide gears. and um, the gears are now gone. So once you get it to this point um, and you want to print it, um, you can come over here to this icon that says download image. And if you click on that, it's going to give you some uh, a way to download this image as a JPEG uh, to your computer. And then you could um, you could take that JPEG and you could print it. The other way that I can um, take my image and copy it somehow so that I can print it or I could insert it in a document um, would be to use uh, another means. For example, I could use my snipping tool. 
So PCs have snipping tools and I could snip this out and once I've snipped it out it's on my clipboard and I could save it or I could paste it into a document um, or I could print it that way. So you're going to have to have um, a, a little bit of knowledge about how to print the um, images that you have. Uh, you could also do a print screen and print it that way. There is not an option here for printing directly from this particular application. Um, so if you use this you're going to have to either snip it out, um, copy it to your clipboard somehow and use it from there or uh, download the image and use it that way. So you need a little bit of uh, a little bit of computer expertise to do that. So if if that's something you're not very familiar with, then I would suggest you uh, start into uh, practicing with this fairly quickly so that uh, you can ask some questions of people who have used this before and, and perhaps can give you some insight into how to take those images and get them copied so that you can print them. Now if you are using this um, and you know how to um, how to copy and print out then you can also take those images and uh, do a cut and paste uh, in order to put them into your document that you're going to be turning in uh, for your project. Okay, so that's uh, a, a bit of an idea of what you're going to have to do for your project. Uh, take a look at the uh, project directions and make sure you do that fairly soon so that if you've got questions, you can ask questions.